I found a board in the bottom of a box. Unfortunately, it's had kind of a hard life. It's brand new, but it's had a hard life. See those little buttons right there? A couple of them are damaged. So, we're going to go ahead and fix that. Coming up next, right here on Better Biomed. Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to change out some buttons on a circuit board because these buttons tend to get damaged all the time. There's a whole variety of different ones that you'll find on circuit boards. These ones here have a raised pedestal. It's basically your activation button. It makes them super, super gentle. Um, this one was damaged in the package, brand new, and this is about a thousand dollar board. And I just can't let that go. So, I was able to find replacement parts off of Amazon and I do believe that these are only seven or eight dollars and it is like a hundred and forty pieces. The cool thing about this is we have a variety of different buttons. Like some of these are the typical ones that you see on medical equipment. They're the flat with a just a tiny tiny raised portion. There's the low rise buttons. We've got oh geez some more low rise buttons. I've got some larger ones. You, we do see these uh, as power buttons on some PCBs. Uh, some more low rise buttons. Probably quite a few of those. All right, this is what I'm talking about. This looks a little closer to what I'm after. So this kit also comes with different lengths of button. Let's see, those ones are too short. Those ones are pretty long. I think it's the first one. I think it's this one. Well, let's go ahead and take a look. Those ones are pretty cool. And then these ones, I have actually seen these go bad on PCBs before. Look at those little squares. But uh, that's right. We're going to go ahead and put all these off to the side. I'm going to leave a link to this cool 140 piece button kit that I found on Amazon. I'll leave the link in the description so you guys can check it out. At seven or eight dollars, it was an absolute steal. Even if you just keep these on your parts inventory for what ifs type of situations, I can't tell you how many times I have seen buttons go bad on PCBs, and they're they are actually very fixable. And I'm going to show you guys how to do that. So let's see, this one that looks like it's it. Look at that, excellent. Okay, so I need two of them. I need one for this guy, and I need one for this guy right here. There's one, there's two. So some of the things that you'll notice is that these ones are through hole. So we'll have to actually desolder these. And in doing so, uh, I'm gonna have to add some solder and we'll go from there. So let's go ahead and turn the soldering iron on and get started. Okay, the absolute first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and desolder these buttons. I've got my soldering iron all heated up in order to desolder these, we're going to have to add some solder to it. A lot of these are wave soldered, and that means they use absolute minimum solder on the board. So I'm going to go ahead and flip it over. I have access to the two. It's going to be this one and this one. And we're going to add just a little bit of solder to the back. And then I'm going to be able to wick it back off. Let's do it. All right. Adding solder to the joints also acts as a preheater for the joint. All right, next. I'm going to go ahead and put some flux down here. All right, that's a good amount of flux. And I've got my solder wick ready. I'm gonna use the thicker braid solder wick, this stuff right here. And um, I'm gonna lay it right down next to the joints. 
heat it up with the iron you can see oh look at it bleeding out real quick that's the beauty of using lots of flux with solder wicking look at that you got those ones already cleaned up so all I'm doing is I'm placing the solder wick down next to the joints kind of touching the iron up next to it and you can see my technique is to pull the solder wick towards me That's how we do it. All right, those look like some pretty clean joints. Here we go. That's looking really good. how clean that comes out nice and easy and once you've used up your solder wick you just clip it start anew These joints are looking really clean. So now I got most all the solder out of there. I'm going to do just one thing. I'm going to heat it up with my hot air station and just get the backs of these joints so uh, I know that they come out nice and clean and it should just pop right off. You can see my buttons are disintegrating. That's not due to the heat from the iron. That's actually because I had kind of put that button back together by hand it was absolute garbage so that's why I'm changing them out and one of the techniques I'm going to use is underneath these existing buttons there's a little tiny lip and I can shove a flat blade screwdriver under that tiny lip and that gives me a little bit of tactile feedback for when it's ready to come out of the socket Right there. Yep, it fits in nice and easy. I'll just go ahead and put that guy like that. Use that hot air station. Should fall right out. Okay. To see what happened it pulled that up a little bit I'm gonna place the little tiny screwdriver under the other side and flip it over and it's kind of creating this TP effect like this that's why I'm lifting it up just slightly I'm using the weight of the board to force down uh, the micro switch I'm not pulling on it I'm use just use a nice slight force And you just kind of feel it pop out, just like right there. All right. Well, that one popped out. Let's use the technique on the next button. Same thing. I'll place the miniature screwdriver right under the lip. Use the weight of the board on the screwdriver. I'm not forcing it. You can just kind of hear it let go once the solder molten's there it goes, you can hear it. All right. Shove it in on the other side. Heat up the other side.
you can hear it creaking this one is starting to let up it's ready to go there it goes all right both micro switches are out now what do you do about the dirty holes for the dirty holes I go back to using the soldering iron and what I'm going to do let me clear some of this out of the way what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat up the hole with the soldering iron and then I'm going to blast it out with regular air just like this ready clean let's try this one clean You see how I'm clipping my solder wick at a really sharp angle? That allows me to get the point down in the hole. So all I gotta do is touch it a little bit with the soldering iron. It just cleans it right up. Let's see, right there. There you go. It shows you how easy it is. And then uh, if I need to refresh my point, just clip it at an angle again. Get a little bit of flux on it, stick it down the hole, and you're good. All right, so now the replacement of these. I'm go ahead and make sure that all the legs line up with the holes. Okay. Excellent. You can see how they just kind of snap in. Now all I got to do is flip it over. I'm going to elevate the board a little bit on my solder wick so it's not pressing down on those buttons. Get this guy out. I have some uh, lead-free solder here because the rest of the board is lead-free. You see that this actually goes quite quickly from here. All right, that's looking excellent. Let's give it another check. Make sure all those are looking good. All right, when I'm placing these buttons in, you can see I've got the half circle that's shaved off. It's a slanted oval, I guess you can call it. And this guy can hold solder on the tip much better than the conical tips. And that's why I use it. Plus it has a lot more heat down near the tip. And what I'm doing is I'm placing it down next to the component and it heats up the socket. Because that's the trick. You want to heat up the socket, not heat up the solder. So I place it down on the socket, feed some solder into it, and then it forms its own natural cone. It's beautiful. Look at that. All right. So now, now I have a whole bunch of flux on the board and all you got to do is take some alcohol and you can get rid of the flux, all right? All right guys, I went ahead and cleaned it up with some alcohol and now the buttons are in their place. They look like they're the exact right height. Got a little bit more snap action than the original ones. It's interesting, but they do work really well. Here's my new buttons. Make sure all the rest of them are good so I don't have to remove any of those. All right, those all look excellent. Okay, guys. Well, there you have it. Replacing buttons on a board. And I even took an extra step of doing a, a UV solder mask. And uh, this one is ready to go. We can pop it on and it's ready for use. Thanks for watching, guys.